What's up, guys? My name is Marcus Huskins, and thank you for joining me. So I'm here today on behalf of my friend Russ Hughes, who's asked me to do a short video on the 4.1.2 update. Now, full disclosure, the majority of this video is going to be focusing on one specific new feature, or feature improvement, rather, and that is the versions and restoring versions from within Studio One version 4.1.2. Okay, so before we start, let's go ahead and I'm gonna open up a finder window. And if we take a look at some of these song folders in some of these mixes I have over here, you'll notice that essentially I have multiple song files that are residing within my main song folder. This is because the way that I have always worked since I started using a DAW is that if I needed to make changes to a song, I would use the save as function. This would essentially give me a new version and I would give myself some type of description in the name that would allow me to go back to previous versions if I needed to, and also to track down a specific version. Now this has always been incremental for me. So I've used some form of organizing. That usually ends up being, it could be something like a version 1.0, and then I may have a version 1.1 and a 1.1b, things like that. So this is a great example of that. I like to work doing incremental saves, and I will give myself some clues within the title description. Now, I'm willing to bet that I am not the only person who likes to work like this. So for example, I know lots of my colleagues work in a very similar fashion. They will use the save as function, and they will store different versions of their mix or their production if they need to get back to it. So let's take a look at how we would do this using the brand new versions that we have in Studio One 4.1.2. So what I'm gonna do is, let's say this is the original version, okay? So we'll go ahead, we'll save this. So this is my original version, this is a starting point. And then let's say that I make some changes anyway I can to my mix. These are completely arbitrary at this point. So let's say that this is now a new mix and I wanna save this as a version 1.1. Here is where the new function comes in handy. So instead of using save as, I'm gonna choose save new version. Now, you'll notice we have this new description over here. Let's focus on incremental for now. So if your system is showing up like this, let's enable incremental version. Let's take a quick look at what this says. Save current state as incremental version and update document to this version, okay? I'm gonna give myself a, a little clue here and I'm gonna call this version 1.1 or maybe it's better to call it mix version 1.1. Now, to keep things simple, I'm just gonna say that working like this is essentially the exact same way as the way that I've always worked manually, but we're taking advantage of the new version system that Studio One has overhauled. So I'm gonna call this version 1.1, okay? We'll go ahead and do that. So the first thing you'll note is that it loaded Mix version 1.1. So now this is my new document that I've loaded, and this is functioning essentially the same way as if though I did a save as. Now let's do another change. So for example, maybe I wanna do something like this. Maybe I wanna add a VCA. Maybe I wanna group these tracks together and I've decided to bust these. So now I've made some changes to my version 1.1. Now, if I were to save this, that would obviously update this version. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to save a new version. And in this case, I'm gonna call this version 1.2. And again, incremental version, okay? So now we have a version 1.1 and we have a version 1.2. Now let's say that maybe we wanted to add something else here. So let's say that I want, I've made an adjustment here, I brought this down, and in addition to that, maybe I wanted to, for example, color this VCA fader. Okay, so now I'm going to save this, I'm gonna save a new version, and this is going to be a version 1.3. Again, incremental version. So let's go ahead and click okay. Now, one of the main things to point out over here is let's visit our song folder for a moment. So if I select this main song folder, you'll notice that the song file that's active or the song file that's visible in the main folder is actually mix version 1.3. So you may be asking, well, where did the other versions of our song go? They're actually now residing in the history folder. But check this out. If I now, let's go ahead and just make sure that this is saved. So this is our version 1.3. If I choose the restore version option, and let's say that I wanted to restore, I don't know, for example, let's say I wanted to restore mix version 1.1, and I choose to restore this, it's gone ahead and it's brought open mix version 1.1. Now let's go back to our song folder, and you'll notice that instead of version 1.3, now our mix version 1.1 is the main song that's residing in the song folder. 
And all of our other versions that we've saved as a version, they're actually residing in the history folder. So based on the active version that you've restored, that will be the song file that is residing in your folder. Now, all of your additional versions, they will be available in your history folder. So again, if I was to come in here and I was to choose restore version and I went back to the original, for example, let's restore the original version. And then I go back into my finder window. You'll notice that our 1.1, our 1.2 and our 1.3 are in the history folder and our main song, the original song that we started off with, that is now the main song. Just to kind of drive this home one more time, we will restore mix version 1.3. We'll choose that option and we'll open up our song folder and now you'll see 1.3 has been restored to the main active song and the other ones are in the history folder. Now, this is not just in the finder window. For example, if I move to here, you'll notice we can right click and I can restore any version or I can open any version directly from within my start window. So let's say that I wanted to open up version 1.2. You'll notice that that changed in my start window. This is now the active version of the song that we're working on. So that is using it in the incremental version. And to be honest with you, this is how I'm going to be using this 100% of the time. But let's take one quick moment to focus on something else. So let's say that we wanted to use the other option. So I'm gonna choose save new version. Let's deselect incremental and have a look at what this says. Save current state as an alternate version and continue working on the original document. So let's say I was about to make some major changes here in this version 1.2, but I wanted to archive it before I did it. So let's call this, you know what, I'm gonna call this version, let's put it in the name so that it's nice and clear, alternate, okay? So I'm not gonna choose incremental. So what this is gonna do is this is essentially going to take a snapshot of this song and it's going to store it as a different version that I could restore at any point in time, but I don't want it to be incremental. That means two things, it means A, that it's not going to open up and populate my screen right now. It will actually be more or less taking the snapshot and archiving it right away. So if I choose this, now it's just archive this. So now if I go to restore my version and let's restore you know, version 1.3 to go to something completely different, we're in version 1.3 now, but at any given point in time, I could go back and I could restore this alternate, which I haven't touched yet because it kind of did that and it saved it and it took a snapshot and it kind of archived it for us, but we were continuing to work in the other song. Now, like I've said, my preference of working would definitely be using incremental versions and being able to name them as version 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, any numeric ordering system that I use and that makes sense for me and my workflow and something that I'm familiar with, that's the way that I will be using this particular feature. Okay, so that being said, let's go back and let's restore our original version. Okay, we're going to go back to the very beginning. We've restored our original version of this song. I want to take a look at one more thing, which in my opinion is pretty huge. First things first, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to bounce these down into some new files. So let's go ahead and let's select these. And I'm just going to use some keyboard shortcuts to essentially adjust my clip gain or sorry, my event gain on these files over here. And I want to have a look at some of the new features that we have with AAF and some improved translation that we have when working with AAFs and specifically sending those AAFs over to uh, Pro Tools. So I've gone ahead and I've made some event gain changes over here. Another thing that we could do just to show it off is let's go, yeah, let's grab a sine wave or a saw wave rather. Let's go ahead and just draw in some automation over here. That's on a 16th bar. Actually, it's a little bit too much. Let's change this to a half note. So I'm just going to draw in some automation. It's kind of arbitrary just for the sake of showing how things carry over. So from here, at this point, keep in mind we went to our original song. Let's use the new version. So let's go to save new version. And I'm going to go to incremental. And I'm going to say AAF for Pro Tools export. So I'm using an incremental version. So this has gone ahead. It's now updated this version of the song. So this has now become its own version. And now it has become the active version in the song file. We still have all the rest of our versions in the history folder. 
But now let's go ahead and let's save this as an AAF. So I'm gonna go File, Save As, and instead of Song, we're gonna go AAF. Let's put it in the main song folder, and it's going to take on the name of the full song and the full version, that's completely fine. Let's go ahead and choose a Save option. We'll use AAF. I'm gonna to choose to embed the audio. I wanna split these stereo tracks because this is going over to Pro Tools, and this I wanna to change to 2448. Anytime you're using Pro Tools, always convert the audio files because it will change all of the audio files in your song to one specific format. So let's go ahead now and I'm going to click OK. And now it's gone ahead and it's created an AAF. I'm going to open up my song folder and let's right click and let's open that AAF with Pro Tools. Okay, we'll go ahead and just create in the default setup. And now let me move over to my range window. If I take a look at these files, the one thing you may notice is that all of the files where we had event gain in Studio One, so you notice with this file over here, the symbols over here, this had 12 dBs of gain. And if I take a look at this one, this had minus 7.9. Let's go over to Pro Tools. Let's look at our symbols. And if we take a look at this one, minus 7.9. In addition to that, if we take a look at the automation, you'll notice that, let me put this to the proper BPM, which is 76. You'll notice that all of our automation breakpoints came over as they were supposed to. You can see that I made them, I created them to reside on the half note boundaries. They're all coming across. So we see one more step in terms of Studio One's commitment to improving the AF translation between Studio One and Pro Tools. Now I'm going to be honest with you, I work with AAF a lot, I could be wrong, but I've actually never seen another DAW that can translate its region or event-based gain into Pro Tools clip gain. So this is pretty awesome because as you know, volume automation means nothing if you have clip gain that's being ignored and you've done a bunch of event gain adjustments in Studio One, if they don't come across, then your mix is not playing back as intended. But in this update, we see some major improvements in terms of our Studio One event gain translating into Pro Tools clip-based gain and also our Studio One automation translating more accurately on the Pro Tools side when it comes over to our automation breakpoints coming through. So that's all the time I have available for today. I wanted to thank you for staying with me. Hopefully you got something from this video. I know I'm pretty happy about the new versions and I will actually be using those now, henceforth moving forward. I'll be taking advantage of these versions as opposed to using the file save as version and having multiple Studio One documents in my file. I'll take advantage of this new feature. So hopefully you guys got something from this and make sure you hit that subscribe button for Studio One Expert and also feel free to head over to my YouTube channel as well where you can subscribe to my channel, Marcus Huskins Music. And as always, we'll catch you in the next video. Cheers.